Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ella and welcome to my channel. So you may have recently seen me unbox the new Galaxy Watch 4. So in this video, like I always do, I'm going to be diving deep into this, diving into the Wear OS and fully customizing this thing to my liking. And if you recently got one of the new Galaxy Watch 4 that runs Wear OS, then feel free to follow along. And I really hope that you will learn some good customization tips from this video and Let's just get started. Before we start, I want to thank Anchor for sponsoring this video. The Anchor Nano is a tiny but powerful 20 watt charger that uses a USB-C port. It is actually about 50% smaller than Apple's original 20 watt charger. The Anchor Nano can charge the iPhone up to three times faster than with an original five watt charger. Although it was designed for the iPhone, it can certainly charge other phones and products like the Samsung Z Flip 3 and my Galaxy Buds. With the Anchor Nano, plugging in the phone for just 15 minutes can give it a lot of charge. So if I ever forget to charge my phone at night, then I know I can just plug my phone into the Anchor Nano and get a good amount of charge by the time I'm done getting ready. If you're interested in the Anchor Nano, you can check the link in my description for more information. And now back to the video. So I'm actually going to be doing all of the customizations inside of the Galaxy Wearable app on my phone. I can do them directly on the watch, but the watch face is just tiny. So I just think doing them on my phone is easier. And I'm going to start with my favorite thing, which is the watch face. So on the new watch four, you actually get a bunch of new watch faces. And I think a lot of them are really, really cute. So let me just show you some of my favorite ones. There's this one called the big number which I think is really cute. And the number in the back actually corresponds to the hour. There's also this one called the AR emoji. And I think this is pretty funny. I probably wouldn't use it as my actual watch face, but um, the little like avatar moves and is animated. And I think it's pretty cute. And also whenever you have a notification, it also like pulls on it and points to it, which I also thought was hilarious. But this next one is probably my favorite one out of all of them. And it's called animals so the watch screen just displays like this animal and there's actually more than one so this one is the monkey but if I tap on the watch face it will change but if you're not super into any of these pre-made watch faces, there's also the My Photo Plus option. And this one just lets you set some of your own photos as the watch face. And I think I'm going to select some of these delicious mochi donuts. They look super duper cute. And now my mochi donuts are on my watch face. And of course, you can also look at more third-party watch faces in the Google Play Store. There are certainly lots of options, but for me, I really like the animals one. So so that is the one that I'm going to set my watch face to. And actually for each of these watch faces, you can further customize them. So for this animals one, I can choose a different second hand color. But the really cool thing is that I can add these like mini widgets on the watch and I can add four in total. So each of them would just go on one quarter of the watch face. I think they can definitely be quite useful. There is certainly a lot of options here, but first I'm going to add a little battery so that I can know the battery percentage very easily. And I think I'm also going to add, let's go with a media controller. I think that can be pretty useful. And I think I'm just going to stick with these two for now. I don't really want my watch face to look super cluttered. And next, I want to talk about the apps, which you get when you swipe up from the bottom of the watch screen. And they are also laid out in this configuration. And I think this part is the biggest difference between the new Watch 4 and previous generations because this watch runs Wear OS, so it has access to the Google Play Store. But previous generations that ran Tizen could only access Samsung's 
Galaxy store and the Google Play store just has a lot more app options. And of course, it also has many useful Google apps. The Galaxy store actually doesn't have any Google apps. So some Google apps that are available on Wear OS are Google Maps. And I actually did try out Google Maps and I do think it is pretty useful, but I will talk about it more in my upcoming review video on this watch. But there's also Google Keep, Google Pay, and Google Fit. Now, not every Google app is available on Wear OS. For example, there is no Google Assistant or Google Home, but I'm hoping that in future updates, they will add more and more apps, especially Google apps. And hopefully one day they will add the Google Assistant for this watch too. But but I did do some Google Play Store exploration and I found a few apps that I really like, so I want to tell you guys about them. The first one is YouTube Music. Unfortunately, I think you do have to have a YouTube Music Premium account in order to use this, which I don't, but if you do, then this could definitely be a great app for you. But there is Spotify, which is available for you to use even without a premium subscription. There's also 2048, which is a game that I'm sure most of you are familiar with and I didn't know how playable it would be on this like tiny little screen but after trying it out it's actually very very playable and kind of addicting too but anyways so there's also this app called the water drink reminder and I downloaded it because I'm really bad with drinking water I always forget to do so so hopefully this app will make me better at drinking water and the last app that I want to point out is the camera controller so this one actually comes pretty installed on the watch and basically what it does is it controls your camera so for example like you can see my face right now on the watch screen and I can also like take a picture like this so if you're ever in a situation where you just like need to take photos by yourself then this app could definitely be useful I think it will definitely be easier to use this than just the timer on your phone and if you want to explore even more app options for Wear OS then you can do so either through the Play Store on your phone or the Play Store on the watch so on the phone all you have to do is just search up whatever app you want let's just do you YouTube and then there will be this little like icon or button that says watch. Just click on that to make sure that it will only show you the apps that are available for your watch. And right here, I can see that YouTube music is available on the watch, but not the YouTube app, unfortunately. And on the watch inside of the Play Store, there are already some featured apps that are listed here. But if there's an app that you want to search for in particular, then just click on the search button. And if you happen to find a super interesting app, then please leave its name in a comment down below. And the last thing that I want to show you guys about apps is that you can reorder them inside of the wearable app. So I'm just going to take a second and move all of my most used apps to the top. And the next thing that I want to talk about are the tiles. They're actually just widgets, or at least I used to call them the widgets, but they suddenly had a name change to tiles. There are certainly lots of options for these tiles. For example, there's this alarm one. There's also the Buds controller, which allows you to toggle between ANC and transparency if you have Galaxy Buds. There's this media controller, this heart rate one, blood oxygen, steps if you want to track the number of steps, also weather and world clock. But for me, these are the ones that I ended up going with. So the first one that I chose is this weather tile. I really like having this like rain bar on the side like that. And overall, I just think the design of this is super nice. The next one is like an activities summer widget. Next, I have a calendar widget, which shows me the date and also a few days ahead. And the next one is my sleep tracker. I didn't wear it to sleep last night, so that's why there's no insights, but typically there will be a bar that shows how many hours of sleep I got. And then I also have this heart rate one, which can measure my heart rate. And that's it for my tiles. So yeah, I actually don't have that many. <laughs> also a quick note about navigating through the widgets. So I can navigate just by swiping like this but an easier way to do it is actually to use the touch bezel but next I want to quickly talk about the quick panel which is what you see when you swipe down from the screen and you can remove some of these add even more and also reorder them and the very last thing that I'm going to get into are the watch settings and the first setting is notifications so one of the most useful features of smartwatches for me is showing notifications from my phone and when I receive a notification my watch 
swatch vibrates just once and I see an orange dot right here. And I can always see old notifications just by swiping towards the left. And of course I can clear them too. And inside of the notification settings, you can choose which notifications you want to receive on your watch. So this doesn't control notifications for your phone, but instead for your watch. So let's say I want to receive notifications for email on my phone, but not my watch, then I can just turn this off right there. I typically don't like to receive that many notifications on my watch because then it just like buzzes all the time and it's kind of annoying. So I usually only have my phone and message notifications on for the watch. And the next few things are under display. So here there's the always on display toggle. I'm going to turn it on because I really like having always on display. I'm also going to enable touch screen to wake so that I can just touch on the screen and it will wake up. And I think I'm also going to turn on show media controls because I think that will be useful. I'm also going to change the screen timeout to 30 seconds instead of 15 seconds. There's also this touch sensitivity toggle, which when you turn it on, you'll be able to use your watch even while wearing gloves. And now I'm going to go into the advanced features. And there are a few settings here that let me decide what these two buttons on my watch do. So for the home key, I'm going to change this to the stopwatch because I do use that quite often. For press and hold, looks like I only have two options and I think I'll just keep it at wake Bixby. Now for the back key, so I also only have two options and I'll just keep it on go to previous screen. Okay, and the very last thing that I want to point out is underneath general. So here there is the touch bezel toggle and it should be on by default, but if it's not, then I definitely recommend turning it on because it just makes navigating your watch so much easier. It lets me navigate through the tiles much faster and also scroll through the app page much faster. So yeah, that's going to be it for the customizations. I really hope that you enjoy this and hopefully you learn something from this video as well. I do plan on making a review video on the Galaxy Watch 4, so be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss out on that video. And if you liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye!